Hi everyone, my name is Matt Olson. I'm a restoration ecologist with the Lake County Forest Preserve District. I'm here today to talk about some information regarding uh, herbicides and techniques for buckthorn management. For controlling buckthorn, you wanna look for products that contain the active ingredient triclopyr. So you have to read the label to make sure that you're finding those products that have that active ingredient. Um, the, these, this is the industry standard for the Forest Preserve and for our entire region. Uh, we're primarily using uh, two formulations of triclopyr. Uh, one is an ester, which is commonly sold with the number four in the title, and uh, an amine. Which, is, which commonly has the number three or has uh, 3A in the title. And it's sold under many different brand names such as Element, Tahoe, Garlon, um, but it all contains the same active ingredient, triclopyr. Before using any herbicide or even handling or mixing it, uh, you should understand the proper protective equipment that you need to protect your, yourself. Uh, this is all indicated on the label of the, the herbicide. Uh, there's a special PPE section for that. So again, I encourage you to read the herbicide label. Uh, but in general, you wanna wear a long sleeve shirt, long pants, uh, shoes and socks, no open toed sandals, obviously. Uh, eye protection and some sort of chemical resistant gloves or hand, something for your hands. We use these two formulations in different ways. Uh, the ester version, or the one with the number four in the title, is a, a product that we mix with oil as a carrier and use that during the winter time because the oil won't freeze. So we can use that to apply to cut stumps uh, in the winter time. Uh, during the summer time or growing season, we use the, the other formulation, uh, the amine with the, the letter or number 3A in the title and that, that's used for foliar applications or applications to the leaf surfaces uh, during, the, during the time when the plant is actively growing. There's specific information in the label for each technique that you might want to employ. Uh, for example, we use this product, the Garlon 4 or the uh, Ester formulation to, to control buckthorn in a cut stump treatment. Uh, there's specific information in this label that tells us how to use this product and in what concentration uh, to apply to the cut stumps. So the information in here tells us that we should apply a 20 to 30% solution of uh, this product in basil oil to the cut stumps, and we use a 25% solution to do that. So a 25% solution of this product, uh, or this product is 60% active ingredient. So when we apply a 25% solution, it, it ends up being a final formulation of about 15% active ingredient. Uh, so I will caution you that if you're thinking about purchasing a ready-to-use product that might be available in the market, just make sure that you read the label and uh, understand the active ingredient percentage, which is usually the first page of the label or very on the very front label uh, of, the, of the product to tell you how much active ingredient is in that. And uh, products that are very low percentages probably will not be effective against buckthorn. So specifically, when you're mixing your final formulations of the product that you're going to use, uh, you want to find the container or sprayer that you're going to use to apply this herbicide, uh, and then fill it approximately halfway full with the carrier solution. So uh, in the case of the ester version or formulation, you're going to use basil oil as a carrier, and in the example of the uh, amine version formulation, you're going to use water as a carrier. So you're going to fill that that container about halfway full of that carrier. It's important to have a good measuring cup, one that has easy to read markings on it, so you can pour the herbicide into the cup and, and easily read the amount that you're trying to get to. Uh, once you have that amount, you would pour that into the container with the carrier solution, and then add more of the carrier solution to bring it up to the final volume that you're looking for. So again, uh, we're using the uh, ester formulation, or the one with the number four in it, to control buckthorn in the winter time after we've removed the and cut down the buckthorn. And to make those applications, we're using a sponge applicator. Uh, and, and that greatly reduces the amount of uh, herbicide volume that we're using out in the environment and also reduces the potential for any off-target applications. In order to make a sponge applicator, uh, you're going to use your sprayer wand from whatever uh, sprayer uh, you have on hand and a few other items that we have here. Uh, primarily, you're gonna need a piece of sponge. Uh, the uh, more dense tile or grout sponges work very well for this. Uh, also need uh, some rags and a few zip ties. And in order to, to make the sponge applicator, you're simply gonna take your, your sprayer wand, make sure the tip is opened up all the way and take the grout sponge, uh, just a, a small section of it, you don't need the whole thing, uh, and just wrap that around the sponge, or wrap that around the, the tip of the, uh, the spray wand, and use a zip tie to hold that in place. Uh, 
Uh, next, you're going to take some rags, and usually you want to double or triple those up for extra thickness, and then wrap that around the whole, uh, the whole sponge and zip tie that as well. So you have it, a uh, sponge applicator. You can trim up the excess uh, rag here if that, that gets in your way. Uh, but then essentially as you, as you squeeze the handle, instead of the, the herbicide solution spraying out the end, what it's really doing is just loading that sponge on the tip. So then you can use that uh, when you're applying it to those cut stumps and you're just using that to dab around the, the outside edge of that stump uh, to, to effectively kill that. And you can, you can see here, uh, you don't need to treat the entire stump surface in order to, to kill that. Uh, buckthorn is very effectively killed by this herbicide by just treating the outer edge as shown here in purple. The cut stump treatment is very effective, uh, but unfortunately buckthorn is very persistent and sometimes it does re-sprout. Uh, also there's lots of seedlings that, that come up every year as well. So uh, once the winter turns into spring and summer and the plants start actively growing, we switch to a different methodology and technique and we start using uh, the other formulation, uh, the, the one with the number three in it, which is the amine formulation. Uh, we, we move away from the, the, the Garlon 4 or the, the ester formulation because that has a tendency to vol volatilize in warmer temperatures, meaning that it starts to actually evaporate and form almost like a cloud of herbicide that can travel to off-target areas. So we want to avoid using that product in higher temperatures and switch to the amine version. Uh, anytime we're using this uh, amine version, we're, we're using it as a foliar application, so we're applying it to the leaves and the stems of the plant. Uh, and we want to add to that a surfactant. Uh, and there's many different varieties that are available on the market, but uh, surfactants help break down the water tension uh, of this product and help it uh, uh, be absorbed into the leaf tissue much easier and absorbed into the plant and translocated uh, in order to kill the plant. So it, it makes this, the herbicide much more effective at moving into the plant and throughout the plant. Uh, the other thing I will mention is that uh, we use a dye, a color dye with any anytime we're using ap um, herbicide applications, we want to be able to see what we've already treated so we're not treating it again uh, or missing areas and we're also not walking through areas that have been treated so we're not getting the herbicide on ourselves. Uh, it's just a, a good way to uh, make your uh, applications more effective and safer. So when making applications, you could just use any sprayer and apply this uh, kind of a broadcast spray to all the leaf tissue or leaf, leaf surfaces of a plant. Uh, but there are some ways that can be more effective at reducing the volume you're using and make it safer uh, to use in the, the environment. Uh, one of those methodologies we use is called a, a hockey stick swiper. Um, uh, essentially, it's just a PVC pipe, uh, so you would create your herbicide solution and fill up the PVC pipe or the, essentially the handle of the, the applicator here. Uh, we've also added a, a valve to this uh, application, uh, which is simply just a garden hose valve. Uh, you can find those in any hardware store. So when you open the valve, the herbicide solution would uh, slowly seep through a small aperture in this, in the, at the end here and start to soak the, the applicator head, which is essentially just a paint roller type of um, product here. So then once that becomes wetted with the, the solution, you just use that to swipe onto all the undesirable plants. So uh, it makes it very effective to treat larger areas in a very short amount of time uh, and without having to stoop over. So it, this, this product really helps out your back uh, from having all that bending and stooping. Uh, another application method that we use is called the glove of death. Uh, this is uh, very effective at getting into small spaces and treating small seedlings. Uh, essentially, this is just using a chemical resistant glove and then uh, putting a, an absorbent cotton glove on top of that. So you would put that on. Uh, you'd have your herbicide solution. You would then soak the, the glove or the, the absorbent glove with the herbicide solution. And then you'd be, uh, you'd be able to kind of move through their landscape and whatever essentially you touch with that herbicide, herbicide soaked glove would, uh, would be killed by, by that treatment. All the products that we've shown here today 
have very low toxicity to humans, pets, and the environment, which is why we're using them in the forest preserve and why we're recommending them for use in home landscapes. Uh, these are not restricted use pesticides, uh, so they're available commercially through many home improvement stores or garden centers, and even through many online retailers. To learn more about buckthorn, you can visit our website at lcfpd.org slash buckthorn. We have a variety of brochures and other information available to you there. Or you can follow us on social media. Uh, if you have any email questions, you can contact us through healthyhedges at lcfpd.org. Thank you for watching.